evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to call to order the October 7th meeting of the Frederick County Planning Commission. Would you join us in a moment of silence, please? Thank you. We have an amended agenda, which uh, we can approve. Madam Chair, I move for adoption of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. We have me uh, minutes from September the 16th. Madam Chair, I move for adoption of the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. We are at committee reports, and uh, I think from the Planning Commission side, we only have one, and that's the Transportation Committee. Uh, yes, ma'am. We met uh, on September 28th. Uh, we had two items to discuss. One was the Valley Pike Shawnee Drive intersection improvement study that the MPO has been working on. Uh, there was three different uh, possibilities. Uh, one of those is broken down into two others. and. Basically, the committee recommended the same as what the MPO had recommended to forward on. Mm -hmm. And then the other was a House Bill 2 update, which uh, things still aren't looking good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Let's see from the Board of Supervisors, Mr. Hess. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, since the last Planning Commission um, uh, meeting, the board meeting that uh, was scheduled for September 23rd was canceled, so I have no report. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> And uh, Ms. Martha Schickel from the City of Winchester. Am I on? Yeah. Um, our Planning Commission met yesterday. We had a work session, discussed quarter enhancement districts, prioritization of those. I think we're going to be moving forward with the Millwood Avenue corridor. And our October regular meeting is canceled. So. Thanks for being with us. I think that's the end of our reports. This is a spot on our agenda that uh, citizens may comment on anything but a public hearing or a discussion item for the uh, commission. Is there anyone who would like to speak to us? Well, seeing none, we will close the citizen comment portion. Madam Chairman, I'll need to recuse myself from the first item tonight. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, it is uh, rezoning 05-15 Hyatt Run Condos, LLC, submitted by Gray Wolf to rezone three acres from RA Rural Areas District to the RP Residential Performance District with proffers. This property is located on the eastern side of Martinsburg Pike, Route 11, just before Old Char Charlestown Road, Route 761. <laughs> The property is identified with uh, property identification number 44-A-17 in the Stonewall Magisterial District. Mr. Ruddy. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Um, the property which you described, um, I'll highlight on the screen to your, to your left here uh, with a couple of slides. The three acres itself uh, was recently adjoined into an adjacent property. Uh, that property of course, contained the Hyatt Run condominium project, which was seen by the Planning Commission here recently, and the master plan was um, uh, approved administratively after it also was reviewed by the Board of Supervisors. The property is highlighted uh, with a black boundary, and as we move across here uh, to the current zoning of the property, again, I think you can see a little clearer perhaps the three acres just to the right or to the east of the existing RP zoning classification. Again, the RP covering the Hyatt Run condominium project. So this request is for the three acres adjacent to it. Again, it was recently boundary adjusted, boundary line adjusted into the property. Uh, the next slide highlights the generalized development plan for this project, it's, or different orientation, but of course then that highlights within that same sliver the three acres again. The three acres that are going from the RA district to the RP district. As I mentioned, this is a generalized development plan that was submitted with the application. So in addition to the three acre rezoning, what the applicant has done is made just a couple of proper commitments, probably most significantly dealing with the residential uses and th there will be no additional residential units in the property. Um, but as highlighted on the generalized development plan with a thick black line, uh, there is a trail that has been proffered with this particular request. Um, that trail it's in addition to the recreational amenities with the Hyatt Run project, and it also connects into the adjacent McCann Slaughter project. That's from the property from which this three acre was recently adjusted. So the trail that's uh, highlighted on the exhibit is one of the key proffers with this rezoning request. 
Again, recognizing that the adjacent Hyatt Run condominium property was recently approved. That was a long-standing residentially zoned project, a property. Um, this general area is outside of the urban development area and therefore is typically not what you would anticipate having a residential development in and around. But we do recognize the previous approvals and the current approval of the Hyatt Run with the RP zoning classification. Again, this application proffers that no additional residential buildings will be constructed on the three acres subject to the request, that all RP uses are excluded with the exception of the ones that are listed in the proffers, and that I'll touch on here in a moment, the community center, maintenance office, parking, potentially garages, open space, and of course the recreational amenities being the only things that would be permitted on these three acres. So I mentioned the public trail system that's part of the proffer. Um, there are no anticipated impacts associated with this particular request. Again, as most significantly, there are no additional residential units. And we uh, don't believe there are any additional outstanding issues associated with this request. The one comment did come up as we, as we continue to review that, and it's, that is, would this three acres allow additional residential density on the adjacent RP property from which it is being adjusted into? Uh, that's definitely not the applicant's intent. Um, if it can be put clear in the proffer statement, the applicant has said that they'd be willing to add that clarification. With that, Madam Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Planning Commission may have. And representing the application here this evening is uh, Mr. Tim Stowe. Thank you. Any questions of uh, Mr. Roddy? Thank you, sir. Mr. Stowe? Good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the project. I am uh, pinch hitting for Mr. Oates this evening and would be glad to answer any questions you may have. I would say the project, uh, as Mr. Reddy just said, does not increase the number of residential units uh, and provides amenities that are gonna be open to the public. So uh, we think it's a, a good addition and respectfully request your, your recommendation for approval. Is there any questions? Any questions of Mr. Stowe? Thank you. C1, thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to us regarding this application, this rezoning? Anyone at all? All right, seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Uh, this, uh, let's see here. If there are any other comments, we need to make them now. Otherwise, um, this is uh, Stonewall Magisterial District. Madam Chairman, this is. <coughs> Minimal to no impact. It does provide public amenities and it is a, an appropriate use of this piece of land. I would uh, uh, suggest um, that we approve this application. Second. Do we need to address what Mr. Stowe said about the proffer? It's ent entirely up to you all. Well, I don't see any excitement about that, do I? Okay, uh, Mr. Unger? Unger, yes. Marston, <coughs> yes. Ambrogi, yes. Rocket, yes. Thomas, yes. Molden, yes. Kenny, yes. Triplet, yes. Moon, yes. And the chair votes, yes. This goes to the board on October the 28th. Our next item is an information discussion item, and uh, it is dealing with our 2030 Five comprehensive plan, the appendix two review. Mr. Ruddy. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, and we'll keep you here a little bit longer than the last meeting because we go through this item and uh, give, take the opportunity to review what the Comprehensive Plans and Programs Committee has been doing over the summer to initiate the first phase of the 2035 Comprehensive Plan uh, update. Of course, it has been five years, it will be five years. Uh, since the 2030 comprehensive plan was recreated, drafted, and approved by the Board of Supervisors. Therefore, we have to initiate this update. When we started back in, in May, June, uh, the um, Comp Plan Committee and, and Planning Commission looked at breaking this into three phases. The first phase, updating all of the background information, Appendix 2, to make sure all of the demographic, uh, <coughs> economic analysis, the land use analysis, was all where it needed to be 
before we got into phase two, phase two being where we could review and update the chapters of the comprehensive plan, the key components of the comprehensive plan, and invite key members of the community in to provide their input. And then as we get into next year, then that will give us the opportunity to have a public, uh, go through the public hearing process and, and then complete the update of the comprehensive plan. So we fall back to where we are today, and that's just completing the first phase, which is the update to the background analysis and supporting studies. On the screen to your left, I've highlighted the, the five components, if you will, that make up Appendix 2, the background analysis. And uh, the historical background and geograph geographical background, of course, haven't changed too much. Um, what the focus of the Comprehensive Plan Committee was was updating the demographic analysis, uh, the economic analysis with the assistance there of the Economic Development Commission and Mr. Patrick Barker, and the land use analysis, which, which included some pretty good information. Um, at this point, I want to point out also that the Comprehensive Plan we're going to have looked at by a, kind of an outside uh, viewing entity, if you will, and they're going through that right now to make sure that it reads as good as it can be and speaks uh, how um, it should do here for Frederick County. Uh, so I'm going to focus here this evening on, on what the Comp Plan Committee looked at, but most particularly the demographic information and the land use information. Um, the economic information is within, certainly within your agenda there too. But on the demographic side of things, um, we know that the county's historic population what that has been, and when the Comp Plan Committee looked at it, when we wanted to update it, we had to recognize, of course, where we are today, and that is um, 78,000 as far as the population. Excuse me, 82,000. It was 78,000 in 2010. So the population, of course, continues to increase and grow. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when we look at the county's population trends for the future, then we would, of course, use the Weldon Cooper Center for Public Service. Most recently, they came out with some population projections for 2020, 2030, and 2040, which indicate that the trend of the county's growing population will continue. And that's something, of course, that we recognize and would anticipate, too. The county's going to continue to grow at a consistent rate, much as it has done in the past. <clears throat> it's important, I think, because the projections that the Weldon Cooper Center have done are consistent with the window of the comprehensive plan, 2030, and then we're going on to 2035. So when we look at the 145,938, which is projected, that's obviously in the ballpark for um, where the county will need to be um, within 2040, or what we need to be anticipating happening. So what we did also was recognize that and include that within the uh, demographic information on the screen to your left is that that chart that was included. Um, so again, that gives us some indication there of where the county is estimated to be going. You've seen this graphic before, but it was one that came out uh, about the time of the Planning Commission retreat, which recognizes, again, that growth, not just in Frederick County, but what's occurring within the, the broader region to know what is actually anticipated uh, within this area between now and, and 2040. Well, one thing we added is uh, the population pyramid, if you will, um, working directly with the folks at Weldon Cooper. They sent us, of course, the information. Population py pyramid basically shows uh, kind of the age and breakdown of your, your community. Um, they, if you look at it, I don't want, I was going to say people who do this thing all the time, look at it, they can tell lots of things from the aging pyramid, but uh, important to recognize that it's relatively balanced. It gets a little heavier with the um, older population, um, but uh, it's a relatively balanced situation for Frederick County. I think it does recognize that we have um, some age-restricted communities that have come online in, in recent years, certainly since the, um, since the last comp plan was updated. Yes, sir? Uh, what's the difference between blue and orange? Male and female. So female Sorry. or orange or? Female or orange. Sorry, that was just a snippet, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are key components, key ages uh, that, are, that are important for a growing community um, or to maintain uh, economic development as an economic development tool and um, employment population, an appropriate workforce, all of those things go into 
go into that. But that background dem demographic, demographic, excuse me, the background demographic information uh, pulled from different sources is an important um, tool that we can use to understand where the county is going. So moving from the demographic and kind of skipping over the economic analysis, I wanted to jump to the land use side of things, and that's where uh, the county's put in some extra work and, and our uh, GIS, Gal Kirsten um, Twarden has done a great job with a lot of the maps um, that you'll see uh, in your agenda, and I'll go through the, the breakdown of those here in a minute, but the planning area analysis was something that we had done prior to the last comprehensive plan update. It was the first stab at it, if you will, which looked at the county's urban areas and just looked at it from a, a magisterial district perspective. And what we did in working with the area plans that have been created over time in the county, and more recently since the last comp plan was updated, and we've created um, some, I guess, better aligned area plans, the Sensney Eastern Frederick, the Southern Frederick, been looking at the Kernstown. So those area plans and implementation of the comprehensive plan <coughs> have been a very important step. So what we have done with the planning, planning area analysis is align them up directly with the area plans and the studies, and I'll go through those here in a moment. Why is that land use and planning area analysis important? Because it helps us understand uh, kind of make the current makeup of the county from a residential perspective, but also from a current zoning. Uh, and beyond that, uh, the future land use. What is the correct balance? What is the balance that is envisioned? Is it um, something that will help us achieve that fiscal balance that is a big goal of the comprehensive plan, the 25 to 75 percent split of commercial and industrial land uses to residential and other land uses? It's also important because it helps us other, uh, understand other infrastructure components, transportation, schools. Um, and a particular effort with this uh, update will be uh, Frederick County Sanitation Authority in addressing the water and long-term water and sewer component of the comprehensive plan. So the planning area analysis, which is in your agenda package and on the screen there, um, as I mentioned, contains all of the different area plans, but the first page is a summary sheet, and this one is, of course, that summary sheet. So it looks at the different area plans, and each, each area is set up exactly the same way. But basically, when you look at it, we understand the gross acreage of the urban areas. We understand how much is within the urban development area, how much is within the sewer and water service area. We've added some things to this one to recognize that we have two new identified sewer and water service areas, one around Lake Frederick that was reinforced with the Southern Frederick land use plan. And then we have two additional sewer and water service area boundaries that were created around the town of Middletown. So we recognize you know, how much land is actually within the UDA and sewer and water service area boundaries. On the residential side of things, which ties directly in with the urban development area report, report we want to make sure we know how many existing residential uses there are, residential units there are, should I say, how many are planned, and how many potential RP1s are out there. That's kind of important because we know the existing. The plan ones represent subdivisions that have been approved. They represent master plans that have been approved, rezonings that have generalized development plans. So it's all of those lots that are in the pipeline, if you will. And um, so beyond the residential, then it also includes the table that breaks down the zoning classifications to understand our current zoning. And as with the land use plan, we have looked at the total acreage, but also tried to see how much of that acreage is vacant, so how much is left to be developed. And so this gives us an understanding of that. Um, we chose a, an, an improved value to, to, to kind of make that determination, that improved value of $100,000 kind of weeded out some of the improvements that weren't obviously commercially driven or industrially driven. Um, and that was a number that was, is a guide, but it hopefully serves its purpose for planning, for the purposes of planning. And the final one, of course, is the land use designation. And that includes all of the land use designations of our comprehensive plan and breaks it down. That, again, is helpful when we're looking at what are the residential land uses, what are our commercial and industrial land uses. And, of course, it includes um, uh, some environmental areas, too, and, and institutional areas, things that may not be covered. So that's an overview 
of the county's planning and area, area analysis that was restructured for this comprehensive plan. That's the, the big picture cover. And as we go through, you know, recognizing each individual one, um, this one, of course, is the Kernstown area plan. So you can look in a little bit more detail, again, at what the current zoning is and what the current land use may be for specific areas, that being the Kernstown area. Moving across, we have the Southern Frederick area plan, <coughs> the Sensney Eastern Frederick land use plan, the Northeast land use plan, the Round Hill community land use plan, the uh, Route 37 West land use plan. <coughs> and then there are a couple of areas of the county's urban areas that have not been contained typically in an area plan. So we wanted to make sure we were including that in the evaluation so the numbers were good, as good as they could be. So in this area of the West Jubilee land use plan, we included, of course, a Harvest Ridge to the south. <coughs> and then to the north, the area just south of, of Route 50 and Merriman's Lane, which is the, the West Side Station, Merriman's Lane um, residential areas. Moving on, that's the Sunnyside Route 522, James Wood High School area that had not been included previously. So that gave us, a, gave us pretty much a full picture of the county's urban areas. Of course, we have to recognize that we have the town of Stephen City. So that was evaluated too, as were the area plans that were done since the last comprehensive plan was updated around Middletown. Again, those areas were, were recognized with the sewer and water service area. And of course, when we pull them all together, we get back to the overview, uh, the big picture cover of the area. What we also provided, and I picked Kernstown just as an example for each of those planning areas was um, the, the zoning map, which highlights, you know, again, the current zoning, so you can actually visually see where that is. And the table on the right, of course, highlights those acreages. So we included the zoning for each of the area plans and the land use. So again, that's available. The analysis has been done for all of those areas. So we have a pretty good um, evaluation of the county's urban areas from a residential zoning and land use perspective. Uh, Mike, I just, I want to commend the planning department. Those maps and that breakdown, um, schools, particularly sanitation authority, transportation, this is the single biggest, greatest contribution to the comp plan that you all can make and the amount of detail you went into, uh, I just want you to know we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So when we take that information that we put together and then kind of combine it with a variety of different things, then we can you know, show how it can be used a little bit, a little bit more. And in this case, we'll go back and look at the residential numbers that are being anticipated. Uh, by the Weldon Cooper Center, and we recognize in the communities that are growing in this area, including Frederick County. Of course, we're recognizing that ultimately to be 2040, 145,000 people. So just looking at the residential side of things, where are we? I mentioned on that cover sheet that um, we have a UDA report which recognizes, in addition to the 18,000 that exist today, approximately 15,900 residential units approved in some way, shape, or form, or, or allowed. So we just did a little kind of a math flow with that. When we look at, and um, please bear with me as I go through this, hopefully it works out okay, but we just tried to walk through that to give some, some understanding of what that additional residential um, units would actually mean when we look at the, the anticipated growth. <clears throat> so the census identifies the county at about 2.68 persons uh, per household. So when we add that, excuse me, when we multiply that person's per household by that 15,000 houses, that's approximately 42,000 in additional population. So when we take that 42,000 additional population projection and look at where 2040 is, and that's 145,000, well, where are we? Well, we take a, from that 145,000, we would take away the 82 that currently exist today, and that leaves us to get to the projected of 63,000. 
additional residents that we can anticipate by 2040. So from a housing needs assessment side of things, we would kind of back into that and say, okay, take that 63,000, uh, excuse me, take the 42,000 away from the 63,000, and that gives us a population that is not really recognized in any residential units yet. So that's 21,000 um, additional population that is not within the pipeline, not within the UDA report that is, should be anticipated in some way, shape or form in our land use plan, in the community plan that gets us to 2035. So when we look at that 21,000 population, that translates to about 7,800 additional housing units beyond what's in the pipeline to accommodate that 2040. Uh, again, that gives us some idea of how it can be used and, and the realities that should be anticipated in the community as it grows. I mentioned other things, but just looking at the residential side of things for community facilities as one component, we've looked at it from the, the water and sewer needs to that could relate to the sanitation authority. Um, you look at it from the achieving that fiscal balance. And it's important, I think, to point out that on the residential side of things, our land use does, does lead us in that direction. In addition, the commercial and industrial land use designations, the CNI, have been added onto since the last comprehensive plan was updated. And the numbers bear out that that balance is still, we're still trying to achieve that balance, but we're getting closer. Um, phase one is that information that we just went through here this evening. As this draws to a close, the comp plan committee is gonna be hosting the next phase, and that is uh, working with a group of, of identified people and anybody else who would like to participate, if you will, at this point, to look at the key chapters of the comprehensive plan, business development, residential development, urban areas, rural areas, and from their perspective, where are we? Um, many of those folks participated before to draft the plan. Um, what has happened in the past five years? Uh, where are we falling short? Where could we strive to, to be? And uh, so that's, that's the next phase that the comp plan committee will be getting into. Um, through the balance of this year. And as I mentioned, once that concludes, then we'll be ready to um, take that information out and go, go public and get, us, get it where it needs to be, hopefully, for the update. Um, again, the complaint committee is working on this, but we have other people looking at it to make sure it reads um, in a tone and manner that is expressive of what Frederick County hopefully, hopefully sees as a good tone. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them, but that we felt was a good time to bring it in front of the Planning Commission. Complaint Committee has seen it um, and, and just really close the door on, on the background information and move on with the update. Mike, any, any other comments? I'd yes. just like to throw one thing out, but that 7,800 homes if additional that we would need to accommodate for 2040, uh, probably most, if not all of them, are going to come from the RA areas. So none of that's accounted for. So I guess just don't feel the need. We need to start passing every uh, residential rezoning coming from. And <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Definitely not. The county's a balanced community, so. <laughs> yes. The other part of that is the other services that need to be provided. <clears throat> and I think we need to be very careful uh, when it comes to rezoning. Not that I want to slow growth or anything like that, but transportation services, community services, water, electricity, schools. I mean, you're looking at seven, the 800 homes, that's 7,000 students. How many schools is that? And that's another six, seven schools. That's, uh, that's a lot of impact. Yep. So we need to be, the planning commission needs to be very judicious in what they uh, require for developments. And with the maps have been put together now, all the utilities and providers can now see where the anticipated growth is, what areas, and I imagine we're going to start getting rezoning comments coming back now that say, hold off on this area, we can't serve that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Go up to. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Comments. This is really good Thank stuff, Mike. Really. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, part of our uh, application that was removed by the applicant dealt with the highway transportation credit. And 
Eric is going to share with us what that is. And you do have a, a handout. Yes, it, everybody has this in front of them. Um, just what I wanted to do is give you a quick rundown. Some of you may not remember that we talked about this actually in December of 2013. And some of you may not even been on the commission at the time. So what I'd like to do is just quickly run through it. Um, probably about th three years ago, four years ago, there was an initiative the Board of Supervisors undertook called the Business Friendly Study Initiative. And some of the things that came, recommendations that came out of that study was let's look at the development impact model. Let's look at ways that we can make sure we're recognizing the impacts in the community, recognizing the economy at the time, and adopt policy to get us to that point. So what eventually was adopted is called a transportation uh, credit. And there was a work session. The reason I say you all may be familiar, because in December, on December 6th of 2013, there was a work session with the Planning Commission and Board. And we talked about a, a number of things. But one of those things we talked about was this transportation credit, which ultimately was adopted by the Board of Supervisors in January of 2014. And the premise behind this credit was that there's a lot of projects in the community, rezonings, when they come through, the developer proffers to not only mitigate the, tr the transportation impacts that his project is generating, but he, he also steps up and does other transportation improvements. And more often than not, it could result in Route 37 right away being um, preserved and dedicated to the county at our, at our request in the future. But it's also doing road improvements, doing a four-lane road when possibly he only needed to do a two-lane road. So the premise behind the credit was let's recognize what improvements the developers proffered to provide to the community and give him credit for those additional values. Um, the, way that, the way that the system would work is you could take that transportation credit that the developer, the VDOT and, and county planning or transportation director talk about and agree on that value and you can use that credit to offset what we believe is your impacts on schools, fire, fire and rescue and sheriff. Things, things of that nature. Um, we, to this point, we have not actually had an application that has requested to use the transportation credit. And quite honestly, I think it's economy driven. We haven't had a lot of complex rezonings the past couple of years. Um, but there are some rezonings that you'll be seeing in the next few months that are seeking to utilize the transportation credit. So we wanted to let you know that it's out there. Um, and when those cases come through, we'll certainly run through the policy so you remind you that why they're using it. Um, but essentially, it, it allows for the applicant to proffer to do things to, off, to offset impacts to transportation and to also use those transportation dollars to mitigate. So instead of doing, instead of providing, providing a cash contribution to offset 100% of the school impact, for example, he could reduce that cash contribution because he's done transportation instead. Um, I can tell you one of the thoughts behind this when it, when it was developed two years ago was that the transportation improvement will show up because more often than not, the way the proffers are written, we're either getting the right of way for Route 37, which is a big initiative for the county, or we're actually getting asphalt put on the ground so we can use and we can benefit from that, that improvement immediately where a lot of times if you get cash proffers to offset school impacts, it, it comes in slowly, it arrives slowly, it arrives when the house is built um, and it's a little bit of money and you have to accumulate it before you can actually use it to, to do the bricks and mortar for this school as an example. So the belief was the transportation improvement you get today, you realize today. Um, with all that said, when the board adopted this policy for transportation credits, they also put a two, two year time frame on it. So while we haven't actually experienced the request to use it, this policy does expire in January. Um, the, the reason they put a two-year on it, they wanted to make sure it made sense. They also recognized it was there for the economy. So if the economy was better, maybe we didn't need it any, again. So I suspect uh, based on what applications come through and what reaction we get through the public hearing process and, and ultimately the decisions of the Planning Commission and Board, it may either support renewing the transportation credit in the future or it may say we, we don't need to continue to do that. But we'll visit that question at a, at a future date. Roger. On that point, when you read it, it's not clear as to it says the opportunity to use it is two years. Does it mean it has to be submitted in two years or approved in two years? What what Because that could be, I mean, there's less than three months left. It could be outside of that window if it's approved in two years. So what's the specifics on the wording there or the intent or 
the, 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 the intent was we'll give the community, the development community, two years from the board's approval to utilize the credit. Does that mean submit it or I think the it's board to approval? Secure, secure approval. So that, it, this, uh, that's what I was yeah. getting to. So, there, so there's a time a frame. More urgent. Yeah. When, when you went in, in, in preparation for presenting this information, I was able to look at the board minutes and the board actions, which Mr. Thomas, you were actually quoted in the board minutes, so you, you were very vocal in some of your concerns, similar to what you're talking about now. Um, but a lot of concern was let's test it in two years, evaluate, see what's happened. So the, what we've gathered from looking at the minutes and the discussion memos was it was a, it, it expires in January of 2016, and then we'll look at, at the products that we <coughs> utilize with it and decide whether we want to renew it for another period. January 7th, 2016. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's two, three months away, I guess. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about this transportation credit, but in, our intent was just to give you an overview, a reminder that it's out there, because um, you will see applications that are, pursue, I guess, requesting to use it over the next couple months. Mr. Oates. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, this can be a little confusing on how exactly the credits work, the dollar values. Um, I guess what I would say is any application coming in, they better definitely have John Bishop in the planning department agreeing to the dollar amounts. Because correct. If they come in and argue that you don't, or that you're not correct, it's going to fall on deaf ears of me. Unless John Bishop signing off on it, I don't see it going anywhere. Correct, and and that's what we're 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 experiencing that with the with the applicants. They want to make sure <coughs> that we are all reading from the same script, so we're all coming to the same credit value. And ultimately, it's a policy decision that if you want to util if you want to allow the utilization of of that policy for credit, we at least agree on what the value is, and then it's up to the planning commission board as to whether the rezoning is appropriate for approval. Yeah, but if they don't have the agreement with you, then they're going to be wasting their time coming here, I think. No, we appreciate the support there, but we've been very fortunate the applicants feel the same way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We will have an opportunity to uh, deal with uh, the item that we couldn't deal with tonight, and that will be here on uh, November the 4th. Fourth. Fourth. Yes. Fourth. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank and you. speaking of uh, agendas, we uh, will be meeting again on the 21st, and I know that we have a, had a couple of short meetings here side by side, but uh, it, eat well before you come because uh, I think we've got, what, seven items? Yes, seven. you've actually got three rezonings, um, at least three ordinance amendments. So we've let you off easy the last couple of meetings, but you're going to have to work a little bit harder next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else for us? <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you.